So, we continue with our discussion uh, on alternative iron making and today is our uh, lecture 16th and yesterday uh, I think before leaving the class I did tell you uh, that uh, among the various categories of alternative iron making uh, I am going to take up uh, one from each group uh, and discuss uh, you know uh, three different processes and uh, the first one I intend to discuss is the SLRN or which is also popularly known as the rotary cleaning process. This comes under the category of uh, coal based uh, iron making process, uh, alternative iron making process and we are producing under you know solid iron basically. So, uh, it is a solid state uh, iron making process and the product will be either we call it sponge iron or DRI direct reduced iron and in the same group that is which will you know, produce in solid iron as a gas based iron making process and that is the midrex process and this also will produce DRI and then uh, from the liquid alternative iron making processes which uses coal and alternative all these processes as you all know that uh, they are going to use uh, you know coal instead of coke. So, uh, the process that is uh, the Corex process uh, first patented by the Voice Alpine, a famous uh, solution provider to the iron and steel industry, and this is liquid. So, from the category of I repeat again solid product, solid iron using coal as the reductant, solid iron using natural gas as the reductant midrex and liquid iron using coal as coal and oxygen instead of uh, air uh, you know as uh, the raw materials for uh, producing iron. So, let us talk about the rotary cleaning process first. So, we discuss this and uh, the raw material here uh, is basically the lump iron ore hematite. Uh, so, lump ore and we use coal and limestone that is it is at once understood that since uh, we are talking about producing uh, iron in the solid state the temperature here is not going to be substantially high as it is in the Bosch and the hearth region of the blast furnace. Okay? So, the temperature in these processes would be very close to the Ustad reduction zone temperature maybe about you know 1000 degree centigrade 1100 degree centigrade maximum in order to drive out the objective here is to drive out oxygen okay, uh, from uh, iron ore and as a result of which impart more metallization and in that context I would like to uh, you know uh, em tell you one that it is uh, We will not be getting complete metallization here, complete reduction is not going to be possible. Okay? So, basically what we are going to get after the process is a product uh, which will be containing a mixture of predominantly FeO and some Fe. That Fe in the context of iron making that Fe which is free Fe is often termed as the metallic Fe and if you sum up this Fe and this Fe that is what is called the total Fe and these two parameters determine that what is how good is the DRI. I mean you know I mean if I sell iron ore okay, it is understood that if suppose if you say that it is a pure material. So, I have in 100 kg of Fe 2 3 I have 70 kg of iron and 30 kg of oxygen that is what it is. And when you have a DRI because you have driven out this is virtually non-existent in DRI okay, because you have subjected it to uh, a high temperature in presence of a reducing environment. So, you will get some reduction done, reduction is nevertheless not complete. So, it is going to be a mixture of FeO and Fe in the whole product. So, therefore, you know how much of an effort you have made in order to produce this will be indicated by how much oxygen you have been able to reduce. If you see if I say that I have been able to eliminate you know from 100 kg of pure if it 3 I have been able to eliminate 30 kg that essentially implies in saying that you know I have been able to obtain 
uh, pure iron, but that is nonetheless not going to be the case in this particular case. So, if this is the initial level of oxygen and the final level of oxygen is going to be smaller than this. So, the ratio of the final oxygen to initial oxygen in the ore determines this determines for example, uh, the efficacy of the product that you have made through uh, the DRI process. So, if the final oxygen is 0 that essentially indicates that we have been able to obtain complete metallization. So, there is a terminology which you introduce and this we call as the degree of metallization, degree of metallization. Or I would say in this case, if you, if you say if you do not multiply by 100, then it is degree of multiplication, but I have I think you know since it is multiplied by 100, I would say percentage metallization. So, this is a important parameter in determining that whether when you go to the market and you want to shop DRI, there are various companies, what parameters you look for? You look for that what is the degree of metallization. In that context, you try to see at the analysis that what is the metallic Fe content and what is the total Fe content that will give you an idea that what is <coughs> Uh, you know the grade of the DRI you are talking about and as far as theoretical is concerned. So, we will just measure you know know the final oxygen whatever is how much oxygen we have been able to eliminate divided by the initial oxygen and that will tell us about the grade of. So, when you subject so the thermodynamics is very well known. So, we will go to about 1000 degree centigrade 1100 degree centigrade that I have called carbon is present here. So, it is understood we have studied the thermodynamically you know carbon is going to be able to take that oxygen or part of it at least. Uh, if you of course, go to 1200 degree centigrade, 1300 degree centigrade that may not be possible or that may create some other problems. Okay. So, we, we will only allow our objective is just to remove you know a significant part of oxygen from uh, Fe 2 O 3 and thereby produce uh, you know uh, a porous mass which you call as DRI direct reduced iron or sponge iron. So, it is not the objective to completely reduce it and in the process you know jeopardize because higher is the operating temperature you know liquefaction may take place. You know the cohesive zone for example, in the blast furnace which you know occurs immediately um, after rustite starts to getting reduced into metallic iron and that creates the passage you know that is a semi solid mass that sticks to the wall of the reactor because this is not a massive reactor as the blast furnace as we will see and it will create lot of problems. So, we do not go to into that region. So, a very high temperature even though may give rise give a high degree of metallization or percentage metallization may be ensured by employing a high operating temperature, but that is not the nevertheless not desired in this process. You know if you can extract 60 70 percent of the oxygen from F 2 O 3 initially present uh, it is sufficient for us and that is a good product in terms of uh, the direct reduction I reduced iron. So, these are the raw materials. So, a little bit of fluxing coal is there, it is going to produce the fuel, okay. uh, air is going to be of course, introduced here, air is also there. So, these are the four constituents that is going to be uh, used in the clean and uh, basically coal will combust with air, give rise to some heat and also the carbonaceous material or the carbon present in coal will be able to reduce it. So, that is the reductant and if there is some kind of you know uh, silica etcetera released in that case lime should be able to uh, absorb uh, those uh, you know unwarranted gang materials and we could see that the product would com com contain a magnetic part which will contain the FeFeO okay, and other is going to be a non magnetic part which will be lime into lime and silica etcetera combined itself. So, by using magnetic separator as we will see uh, we should be able to se separate the product. Uh, the value added product and the waste material once the process is over. So, the SLRN process or the rotary clean process it looks like it is a you know marginally inclined reactor. So, it is a that is the kind of reactor we are talking about. So, we have and this is 
So, it is a counter current reactor, the slope is given because we want the solid material to flow in this particular direction. So, the solid material, all charged material is going to be iron ore, etcetera, is going to be charged, and air is going to be introduced. In. So, this is the port through which you know you can one can introduce air. And there may be burner initially, you know, in order to ignite the process, high temperature, and then carbon oxygen reaction could be there. So, as and this is you know, it is a rotating re reactor, the cane is rotated about its axis, and as a result of which there is a good carbon Fe2O3 uh, lime, etcetera. The mixing is going to be there, and as a result of which, uh, so we have here, for example, uh, Fe2O3, which is solid, and this there could be a solid state production reaction, and Fe2 FeO could be produced, Fe could be produced. You know, no reduction may be taking place, and then we can produce carbon monoxide. And maybe, yes, you know, that we can have CO2 also produced, CO and CO2 could be produced depending on because it is a low temperature. So, you cannot, it is not like a combustion taking place in, uh, in the vicinity of the raceway where we have 1900 degree centigrade and virtually you know, no carbon dioxide can generate there. But since we are talking about 1000 degree, 1100 degree centigrade. Uh, inside the clean temperature, and of course, there is you know uh, a variation of temperature along the length. This is sufficiently you require good residence time. We do you do not want you know the material to enter here and within one second it has to come out. In that case, the objective is not the, so the inclination, the feed rate, and the passing rate of the material through the solid material you know is determined by the inclination. So, it is a gravity induced flow basically and we have to ensure that the material spends enough time in the reactor such that this kind of a reaction can be facilitated. Okay. Then we have CO can also be reduced. So, there is going to be direct reduction uh, reaction as well as that CO2 which is produced at low temperature can react with carbon and then we can produce uh, you know uh, CO2 plus C is equal to 2 CO that is also gas this is solid. So, indirect reduction reaction, solution loss reaction and we know that is equivalent to the. So, this is the principal reduction reaction that is what we are going to say and as I have indicated that it is going to be a mixture of the product that is what is implied that it produces FeO as well as Fe. Okay? And of obviously, as I said that it is controlled relative proportion is will be controlled by the prevalent temperature in the system maximum temperature in the system higher is the temperature higher is going to be the metallization. But as I said that when it is rotating that you know there is a problem called uh, accretion formations because you have in incipient fusion taking place iron oxide may be combining with silica lime may be combining with silica and semi solid product sticky mass is going to be generated and that can start depositing on the solids. Okay? So, if you look at the ring here for example, at the center part this is the wall of the maybe furnace. Okay? So, this is a refractory lining suppose. Okay, because these are refractory line vessels, and then you can see that there are all around solid developments, solid material, sticky material has, and as a result of which the net available area through which the material is going to flow. Okay, so this is a if I take a you know, section here, vertical section, and look from this side, that is the scenario that is what we are going. So, this is called an accretion buildup. Okay, so this is a ring formation. Uh, because of sticky masses sticking onto the refractory wall itself, because these are also you know oxides, refractory material is oxide. So, there is a attraction, you know, natural uh, attraction between the phases, they are similar kinds of materials. So, thereby, you know, a build up really takes place, and in extreme cases, this build up could be so severe that no material will be able, you know, flowing through the reactor itself. So, a very high temperature is not desirable here. Now, so, initially you ignite it, then you you know put it, then the temperature goes up and once the temperature goes up, the carbon and the oxygen combines in here and as a result of which heat is produced and then these reactions, the endothermic reactions uh, really uh, start occurring up to the different degree. So, basically it is a, you can consider that it is at one atmosphere pressure, but at a high temperature could be about maximum temperature 1100 degree centigrade. Okay? Now, once you, you, you produce a material, the material flows out, it is understood that now we have iron ore here charge 
and this contains iron ore. Okay? And here we are going to say now it is not iron ore, no more iron ore, it is DRI. We have produced iron, which is the sponge iron. And this DRI is going to be very, very hot. You cannot expose it to the atmosphere. Then what is going to happen? Reoxidation will take place. The FeO and Fe that you have generated, they will try to take oxygen from the atmosphere and reoxidize. So you have to now transfer it okay, through another reactor without letting the RI come into contact with air and then in that process what happens is you cool it down. So there is a cooling chamber here through which the molten you know the DRI is fed. So there is without any exposure and this is going to be water cooled and within this cooling chamber the temperature of the DRI is going to be brought very close to the room temperature itself. Okay? And as a result of which once the product comes out here you know it is no more susceptible to oxidation because its temperature is so small. Okay? So therefore the, even it is exposed to atmosphere it is fine. And here you have a magnetic separator okay? and that magnetic separator will give rise to separate the non-magnetic and the magnetic material and then you have the DRI produced and this DRI if your plant is a exclusively DRI unit in that case these DRIs will be transported to the steel mills okay, or uh, you know iron making units. On the other hand if these DRIs are a part of the integrated steel mills because there are many steel plants today uh, they have a captive DRI unit in their premise. Of course, there are many other exclusively DRI making units scattered throughout India, but there are many plants for example, JSPL, SR steel plant etc. Uh, they all have a captive DRI unit. So, the DRI produced there can be consumed or fed into their electric arc furnace or even as coolant as I have indicated in their basic oxygen steel making furnaces. So, we have the you have reservoirs containing the material, those materials are fed into the cane. The cane is operated at 1100 degrees centigrade, air is fed counter current reactor and as a result of which partial reduction takes place thermodynamically the conditions are satisfied. Hot DRI is produced, we allow the hot DRI to pass through a cooling chamber which is water cooled so that the DRI temperature comes down and it is not oxidized by its exposure to atmosphere and then through a magnetic separator MS magnetic separator we will separate the non-magnetic material because we will have coal char, we will have unused coal, we will have refractory materials okay? all sorts of things along with FeO and Fe. So, you can separate the magnetic uh, material from the non-magnetic component and then the DRI is going to be <coughs> taken uh, either to directly in the plant depending on where it is. Now, if you think of a plant uh, you know which produces about 500 uh, tons per day of DRI. Okay? So, this is roughly about I would say 2 million metric tons MMT per annum that is what it is 2 million metric tons roughly okay? if you multiply by 365 then that is what you are going to get. Uh, this uh, can produce uh, you know an enormous amount of gas because these are you can you can imagine large amount of gases are going to be uh, produced because of the uh, reducing environment and because this reactor is not as efficient as the blast furnace, the carbon monoxide concentration of the exit gas is going to be significantly higher than in blast furnace. In blast furnace is a counter current shaft and just a length of about more than 100 feet. So, the gas can move up and it can yield its heat and mass you know exchange heat and mass with the descending solid and as a result of which uh, the reactor operates very efficiently that it has a temperature of 300 degrees centigrade in the blast furnace and also the carbon monoxide concentration is not too large because bulk of the carbon monoxide in blast furnace uh, you know upper part granular region have been utilized in reducing the granular uh, the descending charge material. But in this case okay, the gas moves relatively fast okay, and the react it is also uh, nowhere in comparison to the length of the blast furnaces. So, therefore, what happens is that the gas you know comes out the exit gas comes out um, at relatively high temperature and the exit gas also contains a significant amount of carbon uh, monoxide. So, this a huge volume of gas is produced. So, how much of gas? This is about 110,000 uh, nm cube a day and this can generate a power worth of 10 megawatt. And this much power is enough to run the plant and there is going to be a surplus electricity electrical power which is generated. Okay? 
So, you combust, how do you do it? You combust this, then you harness the chemical heat because combustion of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide, we all know that that will give rise to 282,000 kilojoules per mole of carbon. That is what we have done in the case of blast furnace enthalpy and heat balance. So, if you can oxidize this, enormous heat is going to be liberated. With that enormous heat, you can generate steam, you can run st steam turbines and other machines and generate electricity and that is the kind of electricity you are talking about, okay, 10 megawatt. So, you can use this is much more than the energy required by the DRI plant in running the water flow for coolants, in rotating the kiln and in you know other sorts of uh, power requirement etcetera. So, you have surplus power and therefore, the surplus power uh, okay, is going to be can be fed into uh, the company can sell it actually. So, all the DRI plants make money by selling the DRI as well as by selling electric power to the grid. On the other hand, integrated steel plants uh, also like uh, JSPL uh, as well as uh, <coughs> uh, SR, they have you know the DRI captive DRI plants and they produce enormous amount of electricity which is used in the plant itself to run their electric arc furnaces. So, in house generated electricity is substantially cheaper than buying it from the grid to run the electric arc furnaces. So, and it is also true that uh, you know there is electricity for example, uh, one can also sell for example, if the price of the electricity is very high. In that case, what one can do? One can make the DRI. Suppose you make, you can have the price of steel as well as the price of electricity. Suppose if the price of electricity is very high, then buying electricity from outside is not a good alternative. Okay, to run the electric arc furnaces. So you can, you may, you may not be making steel. You may just make DRI and then keep selling the power to the grid. To make more amount of money. On the other hand, so the balancing is to be done depending on the relative cost of electricity and power that how much of the power surplus power you are going to put it inside your plant and how much you are going to sell outside. I mean when we were students about 40 years back, 45 years back, you know we had all steel companies. So, Tata Iron and Steel Company, Steel Authority of India Limited and today if you look at the steel companies, these steel companies are something like Jindal Steel and Power Limited because they have various kinds of units available and one such unit is the DRI unit which the plant you know even we will we'll study that the you know the core process for example, uh, which uh, is used in uh, JSW Bilari. So, there you can see that this core process is and a major part of you know a major revenue for alternative steel making actually comes by selling the spent gases which contains huge calorific value and which has you know. Uh, which can give uh, uh, extensive or quite a bit of resources, add quite a bit of resources to the company. So, in the core process, for example, in one side we will see that the Jindal Iron, uh, Jind JSW, Jindal Southwest Steel Limited, and on the other side you will see uh, there is a huge you know billboard saying Jindal Power Limited. And where from this power is coming? This power is not hydel power. This power is not thermal power. This power is from the spent gas which is being generated by Corex which contains a substantial amount of uh, carbon monoxide. So, economically the economic advantage the impetus for alternative iron making uh, also comes uh, not only from you know using a substantially smaller uh, substantially inferior quality of reductant like coal, but it also comes from the ability to sell uh, electricity or make electricity you know for various uh, purposes. So, therefore, all the DRI units uh, you know are self sufficient as far as power is concerned and uh, this power the power that is generated that can be used in many I mean you can pump it into your colonies okay steel plant colonies for lighting etcetera. You can use it within the plant itself to run gas turbines to run compressors. You can use it uh, you know in coke ovens and you know uh, to run the stoves blast furnace stoves and so on and so forth. So, multiple uses usage of the power or Worst come worst, what you can do is you can just sell it to the power grid, okay? uh, put it into the grid and make uh, money, that is what uh, it is. Now, we come to <coughs> the midrex process, uh, which is the gas based process. Yesterday, I have mentioned that if you go to the Eastern India close to Durgapur, I mean, those of you who travel to Calcutta, for example, you know, if you, if you uh, travel by Rajdhani Express, for example, the Durgapur belt 
you will cross early in the morning about six o'clock seven o'clock and you can see in and around Durgapur how many such rotary clean uh, you know uh, units have mushroomed and it is because of the fact that that area is very close to iron ore transportation cost is less okay and that area is very close to the coal belt because uh, you have you know Jhuria, Raniganj etc where there is good quality coal is available okay and on top of that there are rivers Damodar river etc uh, uh, from which they can draw the power in order to you require a huge amount of power to run these plants because you have to cool the DRIs okay. So coolant uh, high temperature fund this clean needs to be also cold you know uh, cool so that to protect the lining etc. So good power requirement so the rivers sources of water sources of uh, you know uh, fuel that is the carbon or coal and sources of iron ore are very close to the proximity of Asansol. Uh, Durgapur area and if you travel through that area early in the morning you know with any of the trains uh, when you look through the window and you can see that uh, and that is true in and around Jamshedpur also good number of you know if you enter Jamshedpur by train then you can see you know from Kanpur you can see early in the morning that there are a good number of uh, uh, rotary train units sponge iron units and rarely you will find that in eastern India you have a gas based plant because gases natural gases are not abundant in the eastern India it is coal which is abundant in the eastern India. So with this we will stop uh, you know and then talk about talk a little bit about the midrex process which is also one of the prime processes for so India has both all these processes are there in our country okay uh, midrex process for example. Uh, it is the, the DRI which is produced. Uh, uh, these DRIs uh, basically uh, are from coal based DRI and gas based DRIs. So, as I said, that uh, you know, JSPL which is located in the Steel and Power Limited in the Eastern India, there the DRI making unit is coal based and it is like rotary clean process. On the other hand, if you go to uh, SR Steel which is in the West Coast, there DRI making unit is not SLRN but it is the midrex process which uses the natural gas. So the midrex reactor is basically a shaft reactor. So the same kind of material is used basically iron ore pellets are could be feed here okay. So you can reduce the pellets uh, and uh, you can <coughs> use natural gas and from natural gas basically you are going to get a carbon monoxide and hydrogen and so with this carbon monoxide and hydrogen if you do not go to a very high temperature if you have a shaft or a counter current reactor then you should be able to reduce the iron oxide contents present in the pellet to you know lower oxides of iron and also get some kind of a, some degree of metallization as we have seen in the context of. So the reactions etc are same operating temperatures are more or less same but what is essential difference between the two processes here you know that this uses uh, this carbon as the reductant on the other hand in this particular case what happens is we use <coughs> carbon monoxide natural gas uh, which produces carbon monoxide and hydrogen they are used as uh, reductant. So we have to you know put in heat into the system because in the SLRN process or rotary clean process we have carbon combining with oxygen producing the heat also. But in this case if you are using this natural gas then what produces the heat actually the natural gases are going to be subjected uh, you know they will be heated up and then hot gas is going to be entered entering the reactor and that is how the heat is going to be supplied in the whole process okay. So now the natural gas how do you get natural gas basically if you consider it to be methane okay and then it could be. Uh, carbon monoxide we can form uh, uh, either by what is called as uh, air reforming or oxygen reforming or we can also form uh, this by steam reforming. I am not balancing the equation okay and uh, we have here for example also carbon monoxide plus hydrogen and then carbon monoxide can react also with H2O which is produced and then this can also give rise to carbon dioxide and 
H2. That is also possible. Now, all these reactions, if you, if you can see here, for example, I think uh, I will write it like C and then so if I write 2 here, then I write 2 Cu okay? and then we have uh, 2 C and O2 and then you have 4 H2, okay? 8 hydrogen. So, similarly, if you look at here CH4 okay? and then CO, so we can say that uh, we have 1, 1, so we, this is fine and then we will have 3 CO2. These are all homogeneous reactions. Earlier, when you have looked at the reduction of iron ore by carbon monoxide in the context of blast furnace, for example, I have categorically shown you that this is a solid gas reactions where it is a heterogeneous chemical reaction which takes at the gas solid interface and which as you have seen actually moves as a function of time because the reaction interface as reaction proceeds actually travels inside the solid where the reaction takes place. But these are all homogeneous reaction the way of forming carbon monoxide and hydrogen from natural gas as I have indicated here these are all homogeneous gas gas reactions. So, they are there is no not not any kinetic barrier. So, if you can if you, you could see there these reactions some of them could be exothermic some of them could be endothermic okay these reactions is exothermic for example but what you see here that you have six volumes here six units of volumes and you have three units of volume so the pressure and temperature since they are either exothermic or endothermic that there's a net change in the volume as the reaction proceeds from left to right so we can understand that pressure and temperature will have a great role as far as determining that how much methane is going to be converted into carbon monoxide and so on and so forth. So, it is a possible that once you do steam reforming which is this, when you do uh, oxygen reforming we are going to produce carbon monoxide, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, okay? some water is going to be there, some methane is going to be there. The relative proportion of this could be controlled by controlling the temperature and pressure in the reformer itself. So, we have a new unit where which you call as a reformer, reformer, gas reformer. So, we have pressure temperature here and in this we will say natural gas is going to be in and if you are doing oxygen that is and we could also put in some clean gas which comes out from the midrex, midrex reactor into this. So, the gas which is going to go out from the reformer is actually a mixture of all these gases in different proportion and we have to control the pressure and temperature in such a way that 95 percent of the gas should be a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. That is what we would like to see. The midrex reactor basically is a shaft type reactor. So, you can say that this is that is the kind that is the midrex reactor actually. So, we have feed material which goes into the hair. So, that is the pellets and this gas is introduced at this particular level. Okay? That is it roughly here. And the DRI is going to be taken. So, as the lower part obviously, this is the here is high temperature. So, this gas is introduced at a high temperature 700 or 800 degree centigrade and then uh, you know this the bed temperature could be 900 or 1000 degree centigrade okay, depending on the extent of exothermic and thermic reactions. So, the gas will go travel and as the gas will travel which will contain carbon monoxide and hydrogen obviously the temperature is high. So, therefore, some degree of metallization is going to be affected some reduction of iron ore will take place if 2 o 3 will get converted as the ascending gas is going to. So, these reactions will be facilitated here and this part is uh, the hot uh, you know you are taking out DRI here periodically. So, because the hot gas is introduced here, so which is understood that this part is really uh, cold and you have some cold gas also 
could be <coughs> injected here and this cold gas will facilitate that the DRI uh, becomes you know uh, at a much lower temperature because the moment you can take, I take it out uh, you can have the DRI uh, which can react with atmospheric oxygen. But alternatively there is a provision for example, if you this DRI if you, 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 you may not blow the cold gas at all and the DRI may be produced here okay, discharge here in red hot condition very high temperature and there could be a direct transportation line feeding the DRI into its the subsequent reactor that means for example, if you are using an electric arc furnace. So, through an appropriate arrangement the DRI without bringing it you know uh, to the contact of the atmospheric oxygen it can really be charged directly into the uh, electric arc furnace. So, alternatively you can imagine that if you have an electric arc furnace and you are using uh, DRI as the feedstock. Uh, that DRI you, are, you have bought it from somewhere okay, and some DRI plant. So, it is at room temperature. So, you charge it into uh, the electric arc furnace and the entire thing is to be taken to the liquid temperature. Okay. So, therefore, the DRI from 25 degrees it will go up to 1600 degrees centigrade okay, the iron content in the DRI. But in this particular case if you charge the DRI in the red hot condition directly as it is taken out it is fed into the furnace. Okay. If you take out every half an hour. So, you can synchronize it and then you can charge it or if you have two or three arc furnaces lined up you know you can put the feed in you know an appropriate time span directly into the furnace and in that process what happens is you have to heat if the DRI comes out from 7, 700 degrees centigrade for example or 600 degrees centigrade in that case you are feeding in red hot DRI. So, you do you, you now do not have to take the DRI from 25 to 1600 degrees centigrade you are taking it from 700 to 1600 degrees centigrade this essentially implies that there is a substantial uh, you know heat recovery in the whole process itself. So, this is an increasing tendency um, in the this is a hot charging process that is what is the name that hot charging of DRI today whatever the if the plants if the DRI matrix unit is going to be built in the plant necessary arrangement will always be made to ensure that hot DRIs can be fed into the electric arc furnace itself. Otherwise, you know, these are these plants could be 1 million ton, 2 million ton uh, midrex plants, and you can imagine that 2 million tons, you know, of DRI produced at 700 degrees centigrade on a yearly basis. What is the total quantum of heat? It is a mind boggling figure that is going to come out of this exercise. So, therefore, we do not want to lose that heat. Okay. One of the major problems of energy wastage in steel industry is that, you know, we get the raw materials in room temperature, we send you know out the material or sell the material to the suppliers at also at the end of the process you know the finished product also at room temperature. But in the process you can see there are number of cases where it is taken to a high temperature then it is cooled down then it is again taken to the high temperature and in that process what happens is there is a significant loss of uh, heat energy. Today, the increasing trust in the steel industry is to not let you know or minimize the extent of such heat loss. So, wherever there is a scope trap that heat you know which was earlier being lost to the environment and then utilize it in running you know a part of the mill your rolling mill maybe uh, you know uh, the blast furnace stoves and so on and so forth. So, harnessing temperature as I said the success you know making the steel ma uh, if you if you intend to make the steel making process green in that case all the waste materials heat and material which have been wasted must be recovered and put to proper utilization that is the first step towards making our steel make iron and steel making process environmentally friendly. And today when we are students we never heard about all these things, but today increasingly you know slag recycling which is the waste material recycling okay. the waste gas which is going out again this you know this the spent gas is going to be containing lot of dust. So, that you have a gas cleaning plant will do de-dusting and then a part of the gas you know can be fit here. So, we can take this out and here and 60 percent of it can be used here and 40 percent can be for external power generation okay. and this is the spent gas. So, we have fit stock here and the spent gas goes like this and this spent gas of course, there is going to be you know gas cleaning plant etcetera here. So, you will remove all particulates maybe you can remove a part of the carbon dioxide also 
there are processes called I think uh, vacuum pressure uh, sewing absorption VPSA. So, in order to eliminate carbon dioxide process, so you can have many paraphernalia here and then you can eliminate carbon dioxide and this process we can give you you know a good amount of carbon monoxide in the spent gas a relatively good amount of because uh, this contains carbon monoxide and so the oxidation is not going to be 100 percent CO will not be converted. So, some CO is going to be there and then if you can eliminate the CO2 which has also resulted because of the oxidation uh, of carbon monoxide or reduction of iron ore you will be able to get a gas spent gas which will contain significant or good amount of carbon uh, di uh, di monoxide. So, this is one of the techniques whereby carbon dioxide is eliminated from the spent gas and the final gas clean gas from this is a shaft of the midrex is the midrex shaft you obtain from the midrex shaft you know they can be fed back here and feeding back here is meaning already you have a carbon monoxide because your requirement of carbon monoxide is very very large here ok. So, that could be introduced here and then uh, balance could be fed into <coughs> other sources uh, other uh, necessities uh, as I have indicated uh, so far. So, <coughs> there you can uh, you know this midrex reactors as you can see. So, we do not require any coal or coke. So, we require natural gas and we require oxygen and uh, you can do steam with steam also, but then the heat requirement will change and with a, in the reformer the gas in a temperature and composition of the reformer means we are reforming the gas. So, its composition and temperature have to be adjusted when the composition. So, by controlling the process parameters ok and we generate produce a gas from the reformer which contains this which could be fed into the midrex reactor and then uh, this gas will reduce. So, this is a hot gas. So, it is maybe you know 700 800 degree centigrade that is the temperature at which the hot gas is going to be fed here because there is no auxiliary source of any fuel uh, in this particular case and this gas is going to reduce the particles the spent gas will come out it is will be subjected to cleaning and carbon dioxide removal and the balance the gas a part of the gas will be used for you know external work and then 60 percent approximately 60 percent will be used in the gas reformer itself. So, all these things combined will run the process in a very profitable way and to make it even more profitable uh, what we have to do is we have to resort to what is known as the hot charging process which I have indicated. So, hot charging midrex reactor. So, you have used you know natural gas which is abundant coke is not there. So, so much of material you have generated uh, produced that could be used in uh, steel making reactors and on the si same time the steel making process has become now much more efficient because you could harness the temperature. If you have been buying um, the DRI from the other you know market uh, this sorts of an advantage will not be there. So, an in house plant and this has not very you know capital uh, expenditure is not so large as it is in the case of blast furnace and also direct reduction process uh, like a midrex can be established is a very standard uh, practice and many plants there are many numerous plants in the whole world uh, where you know the midrex reactor is used in the production of DRI, but of course the choice will depend on whether natural gas vis a vis coal is available in that particular region. The final uh, topic is a correct process which is a smelting reduction process. And this will produce what is known as a liquid iron. Okay, it's a smelting reduction process. So we'll get the word. <coughs> Corex process has two different units. One we call as a shaft. I'll, I'm drawing it schematically. There are book. You know, you can uh, look at net. You can see uh, them in books. So, the exact drawing of the process may be there. So, these are not so important for us you know uh, they are readily available and you have uh, something like a, a So, this is our shaft and this is our smelter gasifier melter m g melting and gasifying unit.
So, in the shaft reduction is going to take place, partial reduction is just like you know an SLRN process or a midrex process, I would say it is closer to the midrex process because it is a gas based reaction. So, the shaft could be this could be filled with sintars, pellets and lamp poles that is the iron bearing fit sintars, pellets, lamp pole. And in this case, in the melter gasifier, what we do? We use coal. Some percentage of coke is also used, a small proportion of coke is also used, a little coke, small particle, and these particles are very small, 6 millimeter to about 50 millimeter in size. That is the. And in the smelter gasifier, melter gasifier, we use oxygen. So, you can imagine, so the pre reduced ore is fed from the shaft. So, there is actually enormous amount of vegetation here, oxygen because it is pure oxygen, enormous amount of heat is going to be generated in the system. It is not like blast furnace nitrogen and air, you know, 79 percent of the heat is going to take place here, but because it is pure oxygen here. So, the intensity of heat liberation, intensity of heat. Uh, you know is uh, very large here. Uh, so, the combustion is very efficient, there is no uh, sink of heat and as a result of which very large temperature uh, takes place and this reactor you know has what it contains is a very large proportion of carbon uh, monoxide. So, this is the solid pre reduced iron ore. So, the exit gas from here is going to come because it is 100 percent CO and that there is no nitrogen present we can understand that uh, it can have you know uh, an enormous value of CO. In the blast furnace exit gas what did it contain? The blast furnace exit gas could contain about 60 percent on an ideally I am saying <coughs> 60 percent N2 and then we can have something like 20 percent CO and 20 percent CO2 that is one approximate composition of a blast furnace exit gas. But that nitrogen is not there. So, you can imagine that the exit gas from here even though the complete reduction is going to take place uh, inside this melter gasifier, okay, we can have a significantly larger uh, proportion of CO gas. So, it is this exit gas from the smelter gasifier okay, that is going to be put inside the shaft that is the reduct reductant gas. So, is a large proportion of CO and you know here you can have something like 85 percent CO and hydrogen gas. So, <coughs> you can see here that the gas uh, which contains you know uh, so much of carbon monoxide and uh, hydrogen and also balance could be you know carbon dioxide etcetera. So, this gas is going to reduce now this is a very hot gas. So, there is no, no requirement of an additional heating source here the hot gas hot intensely reducing gas will reduce the iron ore pellets and we can have a reasonable degree or very good degree of metallization in the shaft itself following its residence time in the shaft what happens the solid charge material is going to be introduced into in a sealed way of course, is without getting exposed to the environment okay, this solid materials is going to be charged hot. This is also an example of two reactors independent reactors shaft and melter gasifier and this illustrates the principle of hot charging of the pre reduced pellets into here. So, oxygen is introduced here coal is there limestone powder is also in indicated and there is a huge mixing it is a very high pressure reactor, huge mixing, very efficient system and immediately what happens because of the intense temperature and intensely intense carbon monoxide present reduction is completed here absolutely no problem because the temperature is so large okay. and because temperature is also very large not only reduction is completed, but also the iron which is generated uh, is you know uh, completely comes into the liquid state. So, getting a liquid iron in this particular case is no problem. So, here also for example, 
we can get uh, you know a lot of ca carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen H2O, etc. And this gas is significantly more richer in carbon monoxide okay? because nitrogen is not there. How much? I will say in a blast furnace, for example, uh, one normal meter cube uh, gas has I think uh, 30,000 kilojoules and here uh, crux that is the calorific value 70,000 uh, kilojoules per meter cube that is the value of the calorific uh, value that I will just note it from my system yes 3600 sorry this is this is 3600 and this is 7000 that is the right value 3600 kilocalorie as opposed to and kilojoules as opposed to per meter cube of the gas and why is this large value because the gas contains there is no nitrogen here the gas contains still significantly. So, I would say if the blast furnace contains about you know 20 percent CO then this could be containing here itself about 40 percent 35 40 percent CO and this brings in you know such a large value of uh, calorific value uh, or energy you know content uh, chemical energy content of the gas. So, this Corex process this gas actually is very important byproduct of the Corex process. And that is what Jindal I was telling in the beginning of today's lecture that it is this Corex gas that is the heart of the Jindal power which is located adjacent to the steel plant in you know what is what is that place called Turangalu uh, where they have that new 20 you know 22 million ton steel plant. So, if you if you cannot utilize this gas properly um, you will not have a good economics of the whole process because operating the melter gasifier and the you know uh, shaft uh, they are not going to be and the tonnage of metal produced they will not be competitive because blast, blast furnace you know hot metal hot metal cost is what hot metal cost from blast furnace is about approximately I am quoting few years back maybe it is rupees 19 20 per kg that is the hot metal value. But if you want to be competing with the blast furnace production you must be able to sell your hot metal which comes out from this at a similar rate otherwise people will not buy your product and this sort of a competitive rate can only be produced or only be ensured provided you have a judicious use of the exit gas. So, the you know making the Corex process economically viable essentially relies on the fact that you have to use the spent gas judiciously. We will continue with the remaining part of the discussion and then we will move on uh, to the next topic which is uh, steel making. Okay.